everybody, welcome back to Avalon, episode 16. This is a bit of a change of pace from the last few episodes. We're going to go back to the other side of the city, uh, just on the complete opposite side, actually, and work on the other freight terminal, because we had this thing connected already, but it was really just like a bare-bones connection. It didn't have any actual detailing done to it, so uh, this is like a necessary step in fleshing out the other side of the downtown area. Now, I didn't want to do this one just like we did the other one. I wanted to have, you know, a unique look to it. And this one to me felt like it could be a little bit more industrial than the other one was. It was, uh, other one was like very industrial, but it was also uh, very office driven. So this one's going to have uh, quite a bit of like different uh, loading and unloading zones and uh, industrial kind of vibes to it. So you'll see a lot more of that as we... Uh, work through this one. Now this was a little bit more of a challenge than the last one because we have a lot of uh, height differences to sort of work out and uh, I had a hard time coming up with how to deal with that. It was a lot of these, uh, well I guess they're, they're networks now, but they're like networked uh, retaining walls and we used a lot of network retaining walls and we used a lot of pluffable surfaces to uh, sort of you know, define the different heights in these different areas. Uh, but as with any very, uh, you know, height differentiated build, uh, this particular area took a lot of attention to get it filled out. And I actually redid this build, believe it or not, like I think twice, maybe almost three times. I, I stopped the first time, like halfway through and I redid it. Um, I had a hard time finding stuff that I thought really fit this area. So uh, this last build, I think, turned out the best by far, and I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. But uh, the previous ones, it just felt like I was going through the motions. So I tried to really step back and get creative with some of the things that I was doing to, you know, make this place stand out. Because that's one of the easiest traps, I think, to fall into whenever you're working on large projects like this is just going through the motions and uh, thinking, okay, I got to get this thing done. I got to, you know, wrap this area up so we can keep going and go to the next area. And that's just not a good way to look at it. You know, you got to really just think of it as, you know, each new area that I build, I want to make it look interesting. I want to make it, you know, something unique, something cool. And I want to really add to the overall look of the city and not just be another kind of generic part of the city. So uh, I tried to really you know, focus on that this time around with this build and not uh, not just kind of go through the motions. So uh, starting off with some of the larger buildings here, I found these really cool looking diagonal buildings that fit in nicely with our highway. And uh, the highway itself actually got expanded there. You saw it, it goes between our uh, freight terminal and will eventually connect up to the other highway on the other side of the city. Uh, and I actually imagine in the very near future having a massive episode dedicated to infrastructure again. I know we haven't done that in a while, but we're going to have uh, a lot of interchanges on the other side of the city and a lot of highway work, a lot of metro line work, and uh, that'll probably all come in and, and get tied to the transportation episode that will inevitably come at some point. I know I keep mentioning it, but it seems like there's always more expansion to do before we can actually get to, you know, having enough lines connected or not lines connected, but having enough stations to actually build out the lines we want to build. So, that's why I keep putting this off. Um, it's not because I don't want to do it. I really want to add in all the public transit as soon as possible, but um, we have to get some stuff done before we can actually get into that. But uh, aside from that, uh, here is the beginnings of what is probably the most complex um, height divisional work that I've had to do in this entire project. And you can see that what I'm doing actually, this is a cool little trick, uh, using these uh, I'm going to call them retaining walls. I don't know what the actual name is in the workshop, but um, there's a little bug with these where I guess if you if you draw them out and then you change the heights of them and then you try and add more uh, segments to them, it messes them up and they will just always say height too high. So you have to draw out the entire shape and add all the nodes you need before you actually move and adjust heights on these. That's a very important way to save yourself a lot of time and headache. So what I do is I don't even worry exactly about getting the right distances there. You, you saw that I literally just drew the number of nodes that I needed. And then uh, once I have all the nodes in place, then I copy paste, I change elevation, and I move it all in place and kind of move it all with move it. So uh, that's a good little tip on how to save yourself a lot of time and headache whenever you're working with these uh, different networked, uh, you know, node based uh, well networks, I guess uh, it will save you a lot of time. That's for sure. I I had a lot of headache with that in the last uh, last terminal build. So this was 
uh, much more smooth in that respect. I'm also going to use some of these networked pipes. I have been using the assets for quite some time now, but I haven't actually used the network itself. It does look very good. Um, it's much more uh, interesting and dynamic than the previous pipe networks that I've used in the past. Uh, that said, though, it still does look a little repetitive after a while. So uh, after I add in the base networks, I'm certainly going back and adding in uh, some unique you know, pipe assets to sort of shape that area up a little bit more and make it look a little bit nicer. Um, but these retaining walls are going to be very key in this area because uh, we want to make sure that we really segment off uh, this gigantic hole in the ground so that anybody you know, carrying pallets doesn't actually accidentally, you know, drive off into this giant pit. That would be very bad. So we have uh, these retaining walls here, and then we also have all these pipes kind of on the outside. Um, but the ultimate goal is to utilize all of this uh, extra space kind of underneath these pipes and between these buildings as, you know, pallet storage. And I imagine just kind of uh, back warehouse storage where you keep a lot of stuff outside that's about to be shipped off or about to be moved somewhere else. Uh, of course, all of these warehouses are also in place uh, to store more long term. But uh, for the very short term, we have lots of, uh, you know, pallets and things that will be sitting outside. Uh, but before I get into any of those lower details, I just wanted to make sure that we had all of the structures and all of the uh, pipe networks that are going to go around in this area done uh, first. Now you might have also just noticed there that I changed the uh, the LUT a little bit. I went for a little bit more of like a cooler LUT. I felt like this whole series so far has been a little bit warm for the uh, you know the actual feel of Avalon. So um, I changed it up a little bit. And I think in the next like couple episodes, I'm going to be uh, playing around a bit with different lighting settings and different LUTs. Uh, this one, I think in this particular instance, looked a little bit uh, too white, a little too washed out, but. Um, you'll notice in the cinematics that it'll look a lot better, but um, a little bit of playing around going on with this whole LUT setup just to kind of get this all looking nice. Uh, but anyway, moving on to some more detailing in this area, I wanted to uh, you know make sure that uh, that this area feels sufficiently flushed out before we get into adding all the pallets and all the lower details. Uh, I kind of imagine that this is like a big. Um, I don't know, I've noticed this before in, uh, well, in particular, I was just driving through the Eisenhower Tunnel recently. If those of you who live maybe near, uh, well, if you live in the States, you might know about it, but it's in Colorado, and it's the tunnel for I-70 that goes through this, like, massive uh, mountain. And it's actually, like, an essential tunnel that once it was built, I think it was built in, like, 1970 or something, but once they built it, it allowed you to uh, get across the front range from... Uh, I-70 and I-70 takes you then through Utah and through, you know, it, it basically prevents you from having to go all the way around and taking I-80 through Wyoming to get to the other side of the, you know, the Western United States. So um, anyway, that's not really super relevant, but uh, the reason why I bring up the Eisenhower Tunnel is I noticed that in these bigger tunnels, they have these gigantic like air control facilities like right outside the tunnel. So you might have noticed back there that I did uh, a whole lot of like uh, industrial looking, you know, uh, well, I'm using these big metal plates kind of on top of the, uh, the area where the tunnel is entering. And I used a lot of like air conditioning units and I've got all these pipes kind of running around, but I imagine that uh, a good portion of this industrial stuff built out around these tunnels is for air control in these areas so that, you know, you've got nice airflow going through these long tunnels because especially uh, this entrance here is where the uh, the rail line, and this is actually mostly just the uh, industrial rail line. It's not the, um, you know, the passenger rail line, but uh, this whole rail line goes underground for quite some time after this before it comes up on the other side of the downtown area. So uh, I wanted to make it feel as if this is like kind of a, an air control facility before you enter these long tunnels. Now, we've got most of the industrial stuff done now at this point. I wanted to go in and start detailing the area just outside of the freight terminal. And this is sort of more of where the workers are gonna come in and go to work. So I wanted to have a bit of a nicer area around here, this big uh, looping, you know, descending area where uh, all the vehicles come in, they take a right-hand turn and there's like a big one-way loop that goes around the uh, inner side of this freight terminal. It's also where all the uh, the freight trucks come out of the terminal. So I thought it was a good opportunity to kind of add in some nice foliage, some nice details, and, uh, and also, again, deal with this height differential here. 
uh, I had to use these buildings as sort of, uh, you know, an edge to this and then add in some of these, uh, well, some more of these retaining walls to, you know, make sure it all looks like it's all one building and there's not like weird gaps and everything. So uh, that's where that comes into play. Uh, but from here, we're going to finally move a little bit away from that and, uh, and start focusing on more of the details of this area. And I think this is where we're going to start focusing more specifically on the actual goods themselves. We're going to be moving around uh, with this cargo facility. So uh, I'm going to add a lot of these uh, you know, decals to kind of wear out a lot of the, uh, the concrete and the asphalt around this area. And I'll also be focusing a little bit on some of the other outer areas where we're going to have uh, lots of loading docks and they're going to expand not only on this block but on the block we worked on at the beginning of the episode with all the skyscrapers as well so there's going to be quite a few uh, loading and unloading areas and you know facilities for managing all of the goods coming into avalon so <laughs> quite a bit of decal work here i didn't realize just how much of it i had uh, in here oh and i forgot about this little area over here this is a nice little um I guess it's like a back alley that sort of fits underneath these highways here. Uh, I could have filled this out with buildings, but I kind of liked this little back alley that connects you to the back end of some of these warehouses over here. Uh, I imagine that it's not a very high traffic area, but um, I just kind of like it. It, it. I feel like it really gives a lot of personality to this area. So uh, I just filled out a nice little back alley. We got some cones kind of defining where you're supposed to go. and. Uh, very simple back alley, but uh, you know, lots of garbage and you know, trash sitting around here as well. Uh, once we get some more details in here, that will uh, just make it feel like uh, a less trafficked back alley that sort of fits underneath these highways over here. Um, very simple, not too many props either, which is nice. So we're we're saving on props and still keeping it looking nice and uh, adding some personality along the way. And uh, of course, using these coned off uh, lights whenever we have trucks kind of moving around in areas uh, like this. Anyway, moving on to the actual cargo and pallets itself, um, we needed to add quite a few of these around in these areas, and, and they really do add a lot to this uh, upper region. It felt kind of bare and, and empty before, uh, but now we have uh, lots of pallets, and we'll have some forklifts and things, and again, I kind of just imagine this is as like more short-term uh, storage for some of these things that will be moved off very quickly in the loading and unloading areas. Uh, in this sort of weird back lot area. It actually doesn't have any road access beyond just some of these uh, these big garage doors that go back into the buildings again. So um, maybe, you know, out, just like an outdoor storage facility. I don't really know if there's like, you know, different types of goods that are not supposed to be stored indoors to begin with. Maybe that's kind of the, the purpose of this area. I don't really know exactly um, what would dictate where you would store certain things that are ready to be exported, but or imported rather, I guess is the better term. But uh, anyway, coming back to this little back alley and adding a whole bunch of these old trash pieces here. I kind of love this random trash pop prop uh, piece here. I didn't realize that uh, it could be so useful. I kind of imagine that I'd always want to control uh, which trash prop would go where, but that one has like a nice variety of, you know, tires and mattresses and other little trash props you would see kind of sitting in back alleys. and it. Uh, it's very nice for filling out certain areas. Anyway, we're getting into some of these uh, large office buildings around here. I I wanted them to feel like they were very interconnected, and I imagine that there's some industrial work going on here and there. So we got some pipes connecting those. Um, just very quickly, I didn't want to worry too much about uh, the in-betweens for that. It's supposed to be a little more clean cut than the rest of this area, but. Uh, here is where we really get into building out a lot of these loading and unloading centers. So uh, these giant warehouses are full of loading docks for trucks to come in. And uh, obviously there'd be a very big operation going on inside the facility itself, uh, managing all of these imports and exports. And uh, really the big challenge here was trying to get this to integrate with the road nicely. Um, I had a hard time with that a little bit kind of masking the curb there and uh, using some of these like decals and things to make it all feel like it's part of one big thing. Um, but I think in the end it's around kind of nice. I've got these little numbering things going on and um, I'll sort of copy the same design on the other side of this facility as well because it's going to be I think two more in total loading and unloading centers in this uh, little two or three block area. So uh, you'll see that quite a bit here in the next uh, next few minutes. but. Uh, we are getting kind of close to the end of the episode, so uh, as we start wrapping this up, you'll see I'm just going to add a few more of these uh, similar details. In fact, I think I'm going to cut out quite a bit of this so that you uh, really only see 
um, you know, the stuff we haven't already done. I, I didn't want to like show the exact same stuff over and over again. So we're already cut to the end of this one over here. And we'll do this one more time on the other side, adding in some trash and some garbage around here. I felt like this, this part of town would be a little less uh, pedestrian traffic heavy and a little more uh, business oriented. So again, uh, not as clean, not as many facilities for all of our you know residents because there's really no residents around here. It's really all uh, industrial. But with that all said, we are at the end of the episode now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one, a bit of a change of pace. I know uh, it's very uh, cargo oriented and it was necessary to just uh, get this whole facility done. We'll come back next time with, uh, I think, some more work on residential again and continue our ever-expanding downtown area and start working again on what I was talking about last episode, just getting all of the skyline to sort of reduce the way we want it to and then define the edge of that with our residential buildings. So hope you guys enjoyed this one. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>